Today we're headed off the beaten track into one of the lesser known gems of Central Coast California, the Clear Creek Management Area right near Picinus. Crossing the ford over the San Benito River, we're driving along Clear Creek Road entering from the south end of the CCMA. And right off the bat I have a confession to make. For reasons that are really not worth repeating, I find myself at the CCMA without maps. If only I knew someone who could make me a mapping app. My cunning plan today is to use signposting, general recollection of the maps that I've seen, and intuition. Let's see how we get on with that. Surrounded by this raw, untouched beauty, a piece of history is nearby that illustrates the price of human greed and ignorance. New Idria. New Idria is just northeast of here, it's about 14 miles away, and if you've never heard of it, it's an old mining town that boomed back in the 1850s. The town got its name from the New Idria Mercury Mine, one of the largest producers of mercury in the United States at the time. For decades, miners extracted cinnabar ore here, which was processed into mercury. By the 1970s, New Idria had become a ghost town, but the damage had already been done. What's left behind is a tragic example of environmental destruction. The EPA designated the area as a Superfund site in 2011. The mine's abandoned tailings, acidic water runoff and heavy metal contamination have severely impacted local water sources. The damage is so widespread that it could take decades, maybe even centuries, for the environment to recover, if it ever fully does. So the fee station is coming up ahead here, but since we booked online at recreation.gov, and we'll add links to that in the description below, we don't really need to stop here, but this is a good opportunity to get into the permits that you'll need to enter the Clear Creek area. And in fact, there are two permits. First, there's a vehicle permit. And again, you can buy these online at recreation.gov, but the vehicle permit is a $5 permit and it gets you entrance for one week. So it's $5. In addition to that, now at recreation.gov, there's a reservation fee of $6. So you're gonna pay $11 in total. And as I said, that gets you into Clear Creek for uh, a full week for basically $11. Now, in addition to that, there is a second permit that you need to get. And this is issued on a daily basis, so you can only uh, by one day at a time, and that's for the uh, Serpentine ACAC, which is the area of critical environmental concern. Now, that ticket is free, but again, there is a $6 booking fee, so you end up paying $6 for that online at recreation.gov. And you can only have a maximum of five entries per calendar year per person, so you can only come and enter the um, Asbestos Serpentine area five times each year on five separate days. So today in total we pay $17 and that includes the two permits and also the uh, ACAC permit gets you the gate code to enter the ACAC area. It is gated, it's locked and so you get the combination to the lock when you purchase the permit online. And if you do purchase online at recreation.gov you'll find the permits and the passes in your account and you can print them out from there and you'll see the gate code is printed on the ACAC permit. So it's pretty simple. And we're coming up here on the first of two developed campgrounds at Clear Creek. This is the Oak Flat campground and um, we're not staying tonight, or I'm not staying tonight, but just being nosy here, I think this is about six, you know, marked out camp 
sites with, uh, I think that's a fire ring and a table with a shade structure, plus a vault toilet. So pretty standard BLM style campground. Um, there's no additional fee for this once you've paid your vehicle permit, as far as I know. And it is all on a first come, first serve basis, much like many of the BLM campgrounds you'll find up and down California. And I will post some information below about the precautions you should take and the guidelines um, for the asbestos dust that is in the area. Basically, it involves cleaning your car inside and out after a visit, you know, protecting pets and potentially wearing some sort of respiratory protection like a mask. So I'll post a link in the description about that. Coming up here on the left hand side is the turn off to Jade Mill Campground. It's the second of two developed campgrounds in Clear Creek. But I am not going to go and check that out today because straight ahead of us here is the gate to the Serpentine ACAC, the area of critical environmental concern. So I do have to jump out of the truck here and enter the gate code that is on my permit. Okay, so we're inside the ACAC proper now. Um, this area is, I guess, supposedly higher in asbestos than the region outside of the gate. Um, I don't know exactly how that works or how they kind of stop the spread or if the soil just changes at that line, probably not. But um, this area, the sort of general Clear Creek area and the adjacent areas um, actually have the largest deposit of asbestos in the US and potentially in the world. And in fact, the King City Asbestos Company had a mine that's about 15 miles away from here. And the KCAC mine was the largest producer of asbestos in the US and again, um, the world as well, potentially, I think. Of course, asbestos mining is now illegal in the US and so all of the asbestos mining activity has been discontinued here and everywhere else in the US. So now we just get to tour the area and I have seen comments on our social media from motorcyclists in particular who were lamenting the fact that the area is now open only to the main roads. Um, I guess there once was a time when more sort of free access to side hills and that kind of thing was allowed in the area, but no more. And if you are a motorcyclist or, you know, someone who's been to the area before the current rules were in place, we'd love to hear about your experiences in the comments below. Um, I find the history fascinating.
looks like we have a decision point coming up here. It's kind of hard to tell though because the sign is on the floor. And I have to say, the signposting's been pretty variable so far. Let me get out and check. Okay, from what I can make out, and it is a bit difficult to tell because the sign is on the floor as you can see, but I think this hard left here is the continuation of Clear Creek Road and that is the way we want to go. And I don't think I mentioned it explicitly, but we are headed to New Idria, so it's possible to get to New Idria through Clear Creek. You know, basically you follow Clear Creek Road right through the Akek and out, you know, in the South Gate, out of the North Gate. And then a little further on brings you to the new Idria Mercury Mine and there's sort of an abandoned town, a ghost town if you will, up there. And the remains of part of the mill for the Mercury Mine and some of the ancillary buildings are also up there. So, you know, I am interested in history and this is a piece of modern history, definitely. So I am hopeful now at this point that we are actually on the right track. You know, as I mentioned earlier, I don't actually have a map or any map device you know my for some reason I don't have the offline maps on my phone that I uh, have planned to bring with me so um, kind of kind of following the signposts such as they are and relying on some intuition here let's see how we get on So when I got home, I did retrace my steps here, and you can see on the map, we covered about 9.6 miles from the entrance to our current location, which is at a fork in the road. We can go left or right, and zooming out again on the map, you can see just about how far we are away from New Idria. We're pretty close, actually. So this left-right decision will be crucial.
So the signs in Clear Creek have been pretty difficult to read at best. They're very faded. I can just about make out this sign. It's pointing to Jade Mill Campground. Jade Mill is where we pass on the way in, so I think that's the wrong direction. So I am going to do a three-point turn here. We're going to head back to the fork in the road. Um, I think we probably made a bad decision at that point. Alright, we're back at the fork in the road, and if you're wondering why I chose left instead of right, it basically was because the signpost was illegible, uh, and I just misinterpreted it basically. So I ended up doing probably another 8 or 10 miles there, back and out, with that detour. Um, you saw a little glimpse there of another side road that we took. Uh, I was just completely lost and turned around. So I'm going to make a right turn here and head back down the mountain. Well, thank you for sticking with us until this point in the video. You know, of course, I am disappointed that I didn't make it to New Idria. But honestly, when I arrived here and found that I didn't have any maps, you know, it's always going to be a bit of a long shot whether I'd actually make it or not. I got really close. I think I was within four or five miles of New Idria and just took a wrong turn. You know, I blame that on, obviously, my lack of maps. And also the poor signposting. It's really hard to read some of the signposts out here. But, you know, this does give me a great excuse to come out again for a part two. So do look out for part two on this channel in our exploration of Clear Creek and our quest to find New Idria. Yeah, I really want to see New Idria. It's a little piece of history up there and it's just decaying away. There's no sort of preservation of anything. I think there was a fire at the town of New Idria um, a few years back that destroyed a lot of it and the mill and the sort of remains of the mine itself are decaying away over the years you know going back to nature so i, I want to get out there and see that while i still can again thanks for watching the video to this point you know and if you enjoyed the video as always a like is very much appreciated it makes a huge difference to our channel and speaking of our channel we do now have merch available in the form of a couple of styles of unisex and women's t-shirts so check those out you can see them in the shop that is below this video if you're watching it on the web anyway so if you do want to support the channel and of course we would love it if you did then check out the t-shirts we make a couple of dollars on each t-shirt sale we don't make the full price but every dollar helps, you know, helps offset the licenses for things like the Adobe Suite and stuff like that. So one more time, I would like to thank you for watching the video again. Um, if you like the video and if you want to see more of our videos, why not consider subscribing to our channel? Again, that helps our channel tremendously. And if you do subscribe, and we would love it if you did, don't forget to click the bell icon so that you're notified of new video releases. And all that being said, we're going to leave you now with a montage of the drive back down the mountain here in the Clear Creek Management Area in California. <laughs>